Gabriel, Aquarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus signs, and Cross Watchers. This is your tarot and oracle reading for eclipse season 2024. This is the second eclipse season in the year. Usually there is an eclipse season once every six months, and it is essentially a set of eclipses. So on September 17th, we have the Pisces lunar eclipse happening, and then on October 2nd, we have the solar eclipse in Libra. So this is going to be a pretty intense time. Eclipse season is usually times of massive change, developments, drama, chaos. Uh, basically, life just gets way more dramatic and life moves a lot faster. So it can be a really exciting time for you. It could also be like a time filled with lots of dramatic energies, but... Personally, I love eclipses, so I hope you guys have a good one as well. We're going to read into what this eclipse season has for you, and you'll be able to feel this eclipse season before the 17th as well as after the 2nd, depending on how psychically sensitive you are. So let's dive straight into it. First card out for you is Love, Aquarius. Aquarius! You are gonna have some developments taking place in your love life, it seems, uh, in your relationships. And I love the blossoming nature of this card with the flowers. Love seems to be blossoming for you, so stunning. And then you have the chipmunk and laurel with success. I love it. I'm gonna read this from the book for you. I really resonate with both of these because first off, chipmunks are like one of my spirit animals. And then laurel, I mean, my name is Laura, which means laurel in Latin, but it's the feminine name variation. So let's read about it. This is the number seven. The chipmunk and laurel symbolizes a new venture that will surely lead to success. The chipmunk often takes the road less traveled, finding hidden pathways and adventure along the way. The laurel is a symbol of victory used to crown the winners in the ancient Olympic games. Together, they tell us to take charge of our destiny, carve our own path, and find success. Forge a unique path towards your desires. The road to achieving your goals is hardly ever straight and easy, but the journey is ultimately rewarding. So the shadow element of this card is that this could be a sign of stagnation. You may feel frustrated, stalled, or set back. Think about the clever and enterprising chipmunk. What lesser known pathways could lead you to your goal? Or how might you redefine your success? So what this is essentially saying is that you are cultivating a lot of success for yourself during this eclipse season, but you're being asked to tweak things and make changes in how you are going about achieving and finding that success because that is what is going to bring you towards it. So take the road less traveled and you will find success. I love that. I don't know why I'm also seeing like a successful relationship for you guys. And there's nothing in the cards other than that love card that tells me that. It's just, I, I have a gut feeling, a heart feeling uh, that love and a, a new successful relationship is coming in. Now, this could be a romantic relationship for a lot of you, of course. I feel like a lot of you, um, especially if you're single, maybe connecting with someone who can lead to a deeper relationship, but this could also just be a friend. This could also just be someone new you meet uh, through like networking that you start like a business with or some sort of uh, career contact that can really change your life. And in fact, if any of you are trying to find more career success, I feel like through networking and making contacts, that may help you out quite a bit. So let's see what else wants to come out for you. We have hostilities. Oh my gosh, Aquarius. Pay attention to your own hostile nature. The message here is do not add fuel to the fire, okay? Um, if there is somebody in your life who is coming at you with their own hostilities and um, sharp-tongued words, don't play their games. Don't feed into it. Don't clap back. <laughs> this card is asking you to separate yourself from the fight, establish strong boundaries, and uh, don't give this person what they're looking for is basically what it's saying. Sometimes people just actively seek out drama and fights and arguments because they're bored, or even worse, sometimes, especially if they're more narcissistic, they get their sense of inner fulfillment and self-esteem through 
tearing other people down or getting a rise out of other people. So if somebody's trying to get a rise out of you saying something controversial that you're gonna clap back and you're gonna spend your time, your precious time on them, arguing with them, you're only feeding them what they're looking for. And that's going to validate that that's an okay way for them to get their self-esteem and it's kind of enabling. So don't do that, <laughs> okay? There may be family members, coworkers, friends, some someone or something that is wanting to create tension with you or start a challenge with you, a, a problematic individual, and you're being asked to meet the situation with a lot of boundaries. Don't even, be very careful about what you say and, and what you give away uh, during, any, any time where you're having interactions with this person. We have soul solitude coming out as well. It says your soul needs attention. There are moments when it's important to get away, not just from the noise of the outside world, but to find a place where your soul can experience peace and quiet, a place for soul solitude. This is a time to pause, a time to reflect, a time for you. Stunning. In which ways can your soul find this solitude? This eclipse season is asking for you to take some time to yourself. Don't overbook yourself. Okay, because when you have this soul solitude and you're just breathing in the air, sitting in the sunlight, feeling the wind on your skin, just meditating, that's when a lot of these hostilities, these challenges, these negative energies from other people can dissipate. It also charges up your soul and puts you back into that loving, peaceful space. The more you connect with your own inner peace, the more you will attract peaceful individuals outside of you. The more you connect with your own inner divine love, the more you will attract love outside of you. Okay, so let's see what wants to come through from the tarot. We have the three of cups in reverse. Yeah, hostilities here. I'm seeing someone here who is wanting to turn a group against you. I know this sounds so dramatic or for some of you, honestly, for some of the more like lower vibrational Aquarians. Oh, you know what? This may be a mirror, a mirror effect here. You may be picking up on this fact. I wouldn't call it a fact. This belief that someone's trying to turn you against the group, whatever that group may be, trying to isolate you or ice you out of a group. And so in defense, you may be trying to ice that person out of the group. And it's sort of just really an illusion. It's an illusion. Somebody who might be meeting you with hostility, they may not necessarily be trying to single you out or turn a group against you. But you also have to be mindful of these behaviors within yourself. It feels like a mirror effect. Like you're convinced that somebody is trying to turn people away from you. That's not the case. It is not the case. But in retaliation, you then try turning the group against them. Does that make sense? Very complicated. And again, it's like watch out for, yes, the hostilities within other people, but also watch out for the hostilities within yourself. Because when you meet hostility with hostility, you're just kind of creating more of it. Mm, really interesting. Let's see. We have the hero font coming out in reverse. Follow your own wisdom. Find, follow your own counsel. It is oftentimes better to be by yourself and at peace than in a group that is filled with drama and puts your soul in a very uneasy place. It is going to be very wise of you at this time to spend more time to yourself, reflecting, resting, relaxing, organizing your life, following your own guidance. And another thing that I wanna recommend is keep your opinion to yourself unless it's asked for. <laughs> it will save you a lot of trouble. You know, like if somebody is excited about something or sharing a part of their life with you, or even if they're complaining about something in their life, if they don't directly ask for your opinion or your advice, I wouldn't necessarily give it. Because sometimes people aren't looking for that. Sometimes they're just wanting somebody to share what's going on or to vent to. 
you know, and you can have your own boundaries as well. Like if, if the venting is too much, you can say, Hey, this is too much. Like, and if you need clarifiers, you can just ask somebody like, Hey, do you want me to give you advice or do you just need a person to vent to? That's good boundaries. I think with anybody, even your best friends, it's like, Unless you feel very, very, very strongly about something. But again, ask them permission first. Don't just drop your opinions and your advice on anybody unwarranted because then they can get really defensive. Instead, be like, hey, I have a, a, a I want to say a lot here. I have some opinions here. Uh, would you like to hear it? You know, ask for consent before sharing your criticisms <laughs> with, with your loved ones and with the people around you. And also, if you're very set on living your life in a certain way, you're very excited to live your life in a certain way, um, listen to that intuition and keep it to yourself, essentially. Like, don't, don't rely too heavily upon other people for their opinion on what to do in your life. Because at the end of the day, you're the person who's walked my, many miles in your own shoes. You're the only one who knows the fullness of each situation that you find yourself in. And I think this eclipse is trying to get you to listen to your own advice, your own inner guidance. We have judgment coming out in reverse. Mm. Mm. You're deciding to leave something in the past. You could be leaving, it feels like Gemini energy. So this could be friends, like a friend group. This could even be a certain sibling or cousin or coworker drama, something like that. A relationship that you have no control over. So like I said, siblings, neighbors, coworkers, like you can't control that they're in your life. Um, even some friends that are more casual. And I'm seeing you deciding Enough is enough. Like, I'm not carrying... Your, your, your opinion does not have any weight on my life anymore. So there's that. Somebody could also be making the judgment decision to kick you out of their lives. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. For some Aquarians, this is the case. So if you're feeling iced out by anyone in particular, like they're purposefully avoiding you or ignoring you, let them leave. Let them leave. Don't try chasing them. If they wanted to, they would let them leave. Five of cups in reverse. Yeah, a lot of these cards speak of walking away from some sort of connection. And it feels very much like a friendship. It doesn't really feel romantic, to be honest. I mean, I guess it could be romantic for some of you. It feels like more on like a platonic level. But with five of cups in reverse, here's the thing. I don't think you're going to mourn the loss of this relationship for very long the loss of these connections for very long because it feels like you're at your wit's end with it. And there could have always been a sense of coldness. Like they weren't a good friend to begin with. They weren't a good coworker to begin with. They weren't a good neighbor to begin with. So good riddance. You know what I mean? It's something like that where their absence in your life actually brings you quite a lot of peace. And you may be think even thinking to yourself, why didn't I do this earlier? You know, I feel so much better. It's just so much better to like I would much rather feel lonely and be by myself as opposed to in a group of people that makes me feel feel lonely and brings drama into my life like I'd, I'd literally rather be alone and have no friends than be in a group of people that makes me feel alone and like I have no friends D does that make sense because I know when I'm by myself, there's a ton of things I could do. I could play video games. I could read books. I can draw. I can paint. I can make YouTube videos. Like I have a blast by myself. I could bake cookies. But when you're with other people who make you feel like you're alone, oh my God, that's just another level of pain, I think. And I'm seeing you walk away from the connections in your life that make you feel like you're alone. For some of you, this could be family. You know, this could, this could be anyone really. Ace of Wands in reverse. See, this is another piece of wisdom that you're going to have to take with you with this. It's like, you need to focus on what brings you passion and joy and inspiration instead. Instead of getting caught up in this idea of like, oh, I'm going to be so alone. Like, no, use this time wisely. Ten of Cups in reverse. Yeah. Yeah, it feels like problems within an overall like bigger group of people, like a family or a workplace or a friend group. 
there seems to be some drama popping off during this eclipse season. And then we have the hanged man seeing life from a new perspective, seeing people from a new perspective based off of how they react to you setting your boundaries with a certain person or with multiple people. Crazy. Yeah, you're choosing love. Love is blossoming more. Your relationship with self is really, really blossoming. And the funny thing is, it's like when you release, when you let go of the hostilities of the people who make you feel alone and you find happiness by yourself, you focus on your goals, your dreams, and the people who are here for you on your path. It's like when you stop searching so hard for connection, trying to force it to happen with the wrong people, ironically, that's when it does happen with the right people and they'll come to you or you'll just randomly run into each other or recognize finally like, oh, this person's actually really great in my life, you know? So yeah, I mean, this eclipse season is going to be dramatic for you, Aquarius. I'm not even going to lie. <laughs> it definitely feels like, um, like a good riddance type of eclipse season. Like there has been a lack of peace and harmony in a group of people. And you've been struggling with the concept of like, do I stay or do I go? But you're choosing self-love. You're choosing personal success. You're choosing peace over the hostility, the iciness. And if you have to walk away from multiple people, that's fine because your peace is worth it. And it doesn't have to be so difficult. Keep reminding yourself of all of the things that you'll be able to do once you stop putting so much of your time, energy, and attention fighting this fight. You know, think of everything you could do. Sometimes you lose yourself for so many years in the drama of it. You don't realize like, okay, well, what am I going to do now? And it's like, you can go to concerts. You can learn a new language. You can learn a new instrument. You can paint. You can read. You can watch movies. Like, what do you mean? What are you going to do? You can date. You can... There's, there, it's endless. You can hang out with people who don't suck. You can learn how to make good cocktails. You can make your own pasta. Like, <laughs> there's so much to do in this world. There is definitely not a lack of things that you can possibly do. But sometimes we get so hooked on the drama of certain individuals and, and trying to make it work that we just waste away all of our energy on that. And that's what's coming to an end with this eclipse season. So this will be a very powerful one for you that will lead to a lot of self-growth. Set sterner boundaries. Mm. Thank you so much for joining me. Definitely watch for your sun, moon, rising, and Venus signs to get the fullest overview of this eclipse season, especially your moon and rising signs. And uh, like this video, comment how it resonated down below. What kind of insights have you been getting recently uh, with this eclipse season? What's going on in your life? And if you want a personal reading with me one-on-one, -on -one, the link to that is always in the description box, spiritpsychic.org. Uh, they're all online readings and we don't meet. So you essentially buy your reading, ask your questions, and then I will do your reading and send it back to you within seven days. So it's, it's perfect. Okay. I also offer my intention oils there and spiritual life coaching sessions there. So check it out. Bye-bye.